For some introductory second channel content here, we're going to go back to the distant past, maybe of about two weeks ago, when a new Berserk chapter came out, and I didn't talk about it on the main channel. Originally, I was going to maybe do a scripted video, I started scripting it out, and then I opted not to do it. The conceit of the scripted video was going to be a meme where I, like, shit on all of the lore stuff, and, like, did an over-analysis of the Isidro stuff, and then I realised that would take too long, and then it would come out too late. Even though the last Berserk scripted review that I did that came out, like, two weeks late, got like 4,000 views, but that might have been residual from the I Want Wings video that's very popular on my channel right now. Um, but a lot of the other Berserk content didn't get too popular, so I don't know if people are around for big time Berserk shit, or if uh, it's just that one particular video that they got recommended and watched for a little bit and then clicked off of. I didn't check the audience attentive rates for that video. Um, but I have the chapter up in front of me, you're just going to be able to see uh, nothing, because I can't show the chapter on YouTube, but we can we can go through it a little bit here. Well, I only want this to be a short video, just so there is something on the record of me saying about Berserk chapter 130, 363, and at least at 136. 363, I wonder what was going on in 136, let's just check that real quick, we're on the fucking website. 136, let's see what the fuck was going on there, we should be in Conviction, maybe some Tower of Conviction things... Yes, we are in Tower Conviction, Tower of Shadow Part 2, Farnese on a Horse. Um, I think they're just r arriving in the Tower of Conviction. Yeah, Luca and Jerome sex scene, that's a lot of fun. Uh, Casca as Elaine coming out. Uh, Luca sharing the wealth. Nina is sick. Nina goes out to the thing, uh, starts to feel a chill because Casca's getting followed around. So that's what's going on there. That was a curious little thing that I wanted to do. Um, what are we on? 363. Is that what are we, is that what the fuck we're on? The beginning of this chapter is a whole lot of, uh, kind of follow-up. They kind of, the insinuation from, like, the lead-up before this chapter came out was we were going to get more Skull Knight stuff. We really don't. Supposedly this is the grave of his, where his beloved sleeps. Um... And then maybe it's alluding to the fact that it might be Danan or Danan's daughter or Danan is their daughter or something. Danan has something to do. I, everybody's speculating about this. I don't really care. Uh, when it's revealed, it will be revealed. There's this really, really sick shot of fucking them looking at each other and it looks very loving. Um, maybe it could be daughterly love or mother-in-law love. I don't know. Um, Danan obviously looks really young, but that doesn't really mean anything. Um, I thought it was Griffith hair. Turns out it was right. Everybody was like, no, it's Danan hair. Turns out that's true. Um, but it'll be revealed in due time. So I don't, I don't know. It's like on the list of things I want to speculate about. Yeah, uh, this is not very high. Um, and Skull Knight sort of res like down talking himself to just say like, I'm just here for revenge. I'm just an operative of, of, of a grudge and things like that. It's kind of sad. Uh, then we get some allusions to what Flora did. She apparently did a taboo. I think Flora might be responsible for tying Geyserick to the, um, to the, to the armor, um, to a Skull Knight armor, or maybe she made the Berserk armor, no, ha Hannah made the Berserk armor, maybe she originally gave the Berserk armor to Geyserick because she thought the fucking mages weren't doing enough to interfere with the world or something. Uh, Flora did something, wait, Flora is coming back, uh, we know she's very powerful, we've seen allusions to her personal connection with Shurike, so we care about her, and it'll come back in, in this way. Uh, Morda's continual characterization in the background here is really good, we're gonna start to get into big character interaction stuff as Aravella runs up, interesting that she isn't around for this, so she doesn't know this stuff about Flora, or maybe she does know this stuff about Flora, and, like, Shurike could just ask her for it, but for the narrative to be around, she has to not know that she's thinking about it or whatever. How convenient, oh no. But then we start to get into massive character introduction stuff, interaction stuff with this, with the Isidro stuff. I am fucking recording, right? You are hearing this on the airwaves? We are, we're four minutes in. Um, the, the Morta background stuff of Morta always, like, being down with anybody that's rebellious and going against the status quo, like, her reaction to Flora doing a taboo is, like, yowza or whatever the fuck. She is happy about it. Again, we're in love with Morta. She's a, she's a goddess. Um, um, and then <laughs> Avella getting mad at, at uh, Morta for kidnapping little children, talking about Shurike. Again, the mini character interactions that are just in mini frames around Berserk and how the panels are framed and how there's so much dense shit happening on every fucking page here. 
is the spectacular is the spectacular shit. This is what makes Berserk like the best for me. Not really the lore stuff or the grand reveals or the twisting plot or whatever the fuck. These dense character interaction shit. This is why I always say, especially on stream, that Berserk and One Piece are the greatest of all time for the exact same reason because they do this dense paneling character interaction type type shit, uh, and I love it. Um, you sort of have to read it seven times to get the full uh, what's going on here. And it gives so much, like, legitimate characterization and realness feeling to all the characters where Shirake is saying two things, interacting with two different people in one panel here, where she's looking left and right, and Mortar is, like, saying something quippy in the background, and Novella's saying something quippy in the foreground. It's really cool. Isidro just being really cool, and Berserk continuing to get more and more self-aware. This isn't the most self-aware Berserk moment. Puck has been more self-aware where he's literally said, uh, if I wasn't around this manga, we'd be too dark, bro. Uh, to Guts, which is fun. Um, fourth wall breaks like this don't hurt the narrative at all. Uh, they're not around in big dark moments to undercut the tension or whatever. It's just a relative thing. It's just like, Berserk is going to be eclectic in this way, and it's going to have this self-aware shit. And it is funny, so I'll forgive it for anything. But like making fun of Isidro's like, particularly de- like devilish faces and uh, the um, Jar Jar stuff, the Star Wars stuff here is really good. I had to ask Miller what a lot of Star Wars shit means, because I don't know, this nerdy bullshit. Um, I did get the Jar Jar stuff, and when Jar Jar sits on top of the Kelpie at the end and says, this is my kin, and it's sort of like a backtrack of like, ah, the Kelpie is probably based off Jar Jar's fucking design from Star Wars. That's the fucking cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, That's really good. There's a back and forth here. Um, where, like, the tension is about, will Shurike or Isidro win? And then uh, Isma just comes out of nowhere, and the Kelpie just half-eats Isidro and takes all the things, so there's no catharsis on either side. So that this continuing battle between Shurike and Isidro is sort of like, neither one of them ever comes out on top, and Isma's here to play the third wheel and be uh, my daughter. So here she is. She's befriended a Kelpie. Again, this could just be written off as a comedy section, but the fact that she betray, uh, befriended, rather... Like, this big bad enemy that was legitimately pretty fucking scary because it drowns people in rivers and tricks them and all that shit from that one uh, encounter in the village. It's, like, really cute. The fact that, like, even thematically you could write out, like, oh, you can be uh, be friends and understand these animals if you have the right thing. The way the Kelpie looks here, especially because it's come out of the water and, it's like, you can see the wetness on it, it looks real smooth. I, I want to touch it. Um, don't touch my daughter, though, on the back of it, or I'll break your legs. I fucking love Isma. I'm so scared that after they leave Elfhelm, she's gonna, like, go with the Mer people and go back off. I'm sure then she'd come back for the final battle. The only problem is, the Falconia, there's not, like, a lake near Falconia for them to come out and attack from the sea or some shit. Um, I hope Is- Isma sticks around for the long haul. Uh, I, <laughs> I can't decide which uh, Cedro love interest I want more. Uh, the Isma one's more fun. The Shurike one is sort of being built up the longest time when they introduced the, the little, the lolly girl and the lolly boy at the same time. You kind of knew, well, this is where this is going. But then the rogue Isma came in and I've seen interviews with, with Mira where he's talking about how Isma was planned to stay behind after the Sea God chapter. But then he brought the whole mermaid people with them, which makes me think after Elfhelm they're going to go. Maybe they'll go and find the deep, dark sea creatures that'll come back and help Guts in the final battle after Elfhelm's been fucked up. Or maybe as the apostles come in, the mer people will get attacked and they'll all get killed. Uh, and Isma will come back and she'll have a dark moment where she's like, I'm going to kill that fucking hawk. And we'll be like, yes, bitch, yes. Um... But yeah, Isma needs to stick around. Um, all this interaction stuff with Isma is fucking great. I love all the interactions here. They spit up Isidro, and then he gets the shit kicked out of him by all the uh, mage girls. It's all extremely cute, uh, and I like it a lot. Then we cut back to uh, Berserk. We get one casker shot this chapter, which was good enough for me. Um, Guts is like one-liners, and being like a quirky action hero is something nobody talks about, and we don't talk about enough. He, um, it's really weird. I don't know how I like this characterization for Guts, uh, where he's like, he's like, uh, forget about determining the end of the, the, in the end or whatever. As Lazy Island, there's only one thing to do and that's swing this and then he's got a weird smirk on his face. And it happens earlier in the chapter where he's like shit talking Skull Knight and he's like, yeah, he shows up and fucking whatever the fuck's me every once in a while. And it's like, Jesus. <laughs> uh, and then he also thinks about Griffith here while he's smiling, uh, which is... Again, a progression on the trauma front. And then, of course, the 
Moonlight Child appears. And we've never really seen the Moonlight Child interact with Guts. He, like, helped him out of the Sea God stuff. But, like, usually he's grabbing on a Casca. So it'll be interesting to see how Guts interacts with him, like, immediately after this. So the, the cliffhanger for next chapter I'm very curious about. I'm very excited for. Um, I'm into it. I want to see what's going on. Outside of that, there's a lot of little details. Again, this chapter is very big on the little details, as most Berserk chapters are. Um, it's just, like, in the little details, you got to see it. Um, Puck's saying something funny I'm trying to read here. Uh, the the text is a little small sometimes, I must say. Uh, you got to zoom in. Um, but again, dense shit. Like, there are not that many pages to a Berserk chapter, but my God if he doesn't pack that shit full of stuff. Whether it's not, it's like these dense, incredible fucking drawings, like the last drawings. Um, like last chapter with all the double spreads of the God Hand. Uh, then it's like singular pages with a million little details. I was expecting like a backlash to this chapter about people being mad and reaffirming their stupid shit about how Berserk is super dark, bro. You can't have these light moments. Um, but that never really came. If that had come, if the people had started talking that shit, maybe I would be more motivated to make the video where it's sort of like an over-analysis of every little panel of the Isidro stuff and me, like, introducing. We start off the chapter with some boring bullshit about some skull boy we don't care about, and then we get to the real shit. Isidro, can he do it? Can he beat the witches? And sort of build up this sort of meme narrative in the video. Casca and Fani seem to be talking. I want to see what the fuck they're talking about. Um... Casca will continue to be the best character in Berserk, all right? Leave me alone. But outside of that, it's just like, I just want to get my brief thoughts out there. I didn't want this video to be more than like 10, 15 minutes, and I think it's, we're at about 11 now. So I'm happy on that front. Overall, um, there is a lot more analysis you could do on a reread of literally the, the Isidro stuff. There's a lot of mini gags in there um, that you might not get. Again, the characterization is what makes Berserk the greatest manga of all time. And it's these little moments of fun. Also, these little moments of fun ingratiate us. I was saying that that this word all throughout the digest thing I just recorded. And I don't know if it's the, the, the right word. Endears us to the, 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 the mages of Elfhelm, all the different characters, Danan, uh, the, the small dude, mage dude at the beginning. I forget his fucking name. Havnar or whatever. Hainar is the uh, foraging dude, the blacksmith. But, like, everything's going to go to shit on Elfhelm, and we're sort of growing attached to Elfhelm here through these funny antics with the Cedro and everybody. And there's Kelpies here and everything. It's like, if there is a big battle here and this Kelpie shows up and Isma is using it to attack Apostles, that's going to be pretty cool, and it was set up here, so it will have consequence. And, like, is a Cedro in a big... Uh, are these mages going to get cornered and a Cedro is going to come out of nowhere and have a big bad stand against an Apostle that's, like, threatening the little mages and save them, and it'll be a like a, a continuation of this arc. What's Morda going to do? Is she going to side with Griffith because she's a rebellious little shit? Is she going to be uh, on her queen shit and stick with us and fuck up Griffith or something? We'll have to see. Um, also, I told you, I told you, I told you, like two scripted videos ago, that Morda was going to like Isidro, and she does. Um, Isidro likes her too, because those breastuses are on display. Um... But yeah, Morta is loving the fucking Isidro fucking with shit. I'm very curious where Morta goes. She's a great character. I love her fucking character design. She's super hot. Uh, let's see where all that goes. But I was trying to end it, and I got distracted. We got two more minutes of content. So there you go. Um, with that being said, uh, we'll do periodic videos, probably unscripted videos about each Berserk chapter as they come out here on the uh, second channel. Uh, I'm going to start back up with the Vinland Saga stuff. It'll be more videos like this, just talking about the chapter, rather than, like, a review. Um, and we'll do this for other stuff, too. Um, I'm thinking of uploading stream highlights of my Hunter Hunter and One Piece and discussions like that. Not Hunter Hunter and One Piece, Hunter Hunter and Naruto. Because with the One Piece discussions on stream, I'm always scrolling through the chapters, and we can't put that on YouTube. But with the anime I'm rewatching or watching for the first time, in the case of Hunter Hunter, rewatching in the case of Naruto, I can just upload those because I'm just usually on the wiki page for the episode. Um, but yeah, more content will be coming to the second channel. Uh, get ready for that shit, I, I, I suppose. Um... 
but yeah, that's all. That's it for this one. We we decided we're just gonna say our usual catchphrase to end things. So support links in the description below.